Wanda Smith was very close to the Miami Dolphins. I also really want that. However, we need to consider the matter in another angle. The Miami Dolphins will need to decide between Penny Sewell or Devonta Smith with the third overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft. However, in terms of the NFL Draft, the Dolphins have been the bearers of good news as of late. First, the team secured the third overall pick thanks to the Houston Texans' poor season and loss to the Tennessee Titans in Week 17. The second piece of good news came in the form of the Senior Bowl in Mobile, Alabama. Due to teams changing coaching staffs and others declining to attend, the Dolphins will be one of two coaching staffs on hand. In a year where it seems likely that there will be no combine or pro days, this is a massive win. Coming off a 10-win season, one game short of the playoffs, and seeing an elite jump from their defense, the Dolphins will need to use all of these advantages in order to take that next step. Miami Dolphins draft an offensive tackle? The keyword in the headline is logical. I'm not saying that drafting offensive tackle, highly athletic, pure wrecking ball of a human Penny Sewell is the best or most the fun move the Dolphins can make with the third overall pick. I'm saying that it's the most logical move that this current Dolphins team can make. Now, this current Dolphins squad could change within a moment's notice because we all know there's a possibility of a blockbuster video type trade that's looming. We know that it's not impossible that the Dolphins don't send all the picks they fleeced the Texans for months ago and Tua Tungavailoa for Deshaun Watson. We can't act like there is no way that happens. Stone Cold Brian Flores does what he wants when he wants and doesn't care what anyone says, thinks, or writes about him. Personally, I ultimately think the Dolphins will keep their picks and go with the guy they said was going to be their opening day starter for the 2021 season, Tua Tungavailoa. This video will be written under the guise of that reality. To me, and written under the guise of that reality. To me, and I imagine the majority of Twitter scouts, the talking heads, Kuiper and McShay, and everyone trying to be Kuiper and McShay, the Dolphins have three options on who to take in the upcoming 2021 draft. They can take the Heisman winner and all-around most awesome, dominant player to have played in the last decade or so, Devonta Smith. Smith demolished the Buckeyes in the national championship game on Monday night to the tune of 215 yards with three TDs in the first half. Like you, I don't know how a receiver who just won the Heisman gets so wide open nearly every single play. Perhaps, Smith is some sort of a sorcerer or he has a music box from Super Mario 3 that puts his foes asleep as he slides right past them. However he did it and does it, it's wildly impressive and he appears like an absolute no-brainer of a selection for a Dolphins team that is devoid of quality pass catchers like Chase Claypool is devoid of self-awareness. Another option the Dolphins will consider is trading out of third pin one looking to get Justin Fields, Zach Wilson, or anyone else they covet. I wouldn't hate that route either. There are really good to great players all over the place in the draft and getting more cracks in the top half of the first round gives you better odds of landing more really good players. Miami already has two first rounders. It'd be cool to have three first rounders and more, again. But like the headline says, the logical choice is for the Dolphins to take Penny Sewell with the number three overall pick if that's where they stay and if Tua is their quarterback. The reasons I feel that the smart choice for the Dolphins is to take the force of nature left tackle over the shiny super fun receiver is that I watched the games this year. For all the eye rolls that the Dolphins receiving core got, and they deserved a good amount, the Miami offensive line was, in my opinion, much of the blame. Besides the Dolphins having the dead last running offense in the league, they also sported the 20th passing offense. Sure, you could put some blame on the recently resigned Ch and the fact Miami had a rookie signal caller out there. But to me, the lack of steady pass blocking led to Miami's offense not being able to do much downfield. It led to the receivers not being able to get any kind of separation. Bad pass blocking leads to play calls from whoever is the offensive coordinator which have to be plays where the receivers have to get open in two seconds or less. That leads to no plays that can have receivers go downfield which leads to more three and outs. That leads to fewer possessions which ultimately leads to fewer points. In that verbal flowchart, I didn't mention how that puts more pressure on your defense, which is something you would rather avoid if you can help it because the league is designed for offenses to score tons of points. Are y'all going to see loads of highlight films of this guy and Devona Smith? I'm slightly sorry that I'm adding to it but I just want you to see some visual evidence of Sewell's dominance when he was a sophomore. Oh yeah in case you didn't know, Sewell sat out this year. 
He won the Outland Trophy, which is the award for the nation's best interior lineman as a sophomore. That's pretty good I think. In late August, Pro Football Focus had Sewell as one of the best tackle prospects that there's ever been. In a year that saw four tackles drafted within the first 13 picks, it was the 19-year-old Oregon tackle who led the position in wins above replacement, he wrote. His 95.8 overall grade last season was the highest we've ever given to a tackle. And when I say in the draft guide that he doesn't have weaknesses, I am not lying. Look, I get that drafting Sewell at number 3 isn't very fun or exciting. The Dolphins have been down this road before when they drafted Jake Long over Matt Ryan and many are still not over it. Drafting a lineman that early doesn't make anybody freak out like we did when Miami took Tua last year. There's not going to be many montage videos of Dolphins fans losing their minds because a left tackle was selected. It'll be more like this. Uston understanding that the correct move was made. No need to go wild. Just enjoy your time in Italy and forget about the decision in taking the tackle. Devonda Smith is fantastic and might possibly be a generational talent. It would be a really special thing to reunite Smith with Tua. The familiarity they have with each other would shave some of the growing pains I would think. I just think that a lot more goes into Devonta Smith being a force. Like I already said, pass blocking allows good, dynamic play calling which lets receivers get open. If Miami can't pass block then it doesn't matter how good Smith is. He won't get the ball except for slants. I also think you can still get really good receivers later in the first round but I'm not sure you'll receivers later in the first round but I'm not sure you'll be able to get a talent quite like Sewell who is less dependent on others to do his job at a high level later in the first. I know the cliches that you build a team from inside out and that you take of the trenches first are extremely tiresome, and that you're going to hear more of it as we get closer to the draft. I feel the same way about hearing them, but that ideology is correct. An offense can overcome its skills players a lot easier if the offensive line is stout than the skills players overcoming a bad offensive line. I can't recall a team that made a serious playoff run that couldn't block. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. But, there are several teams that went on runs in the postseason with average to below average skills guys. I won't be upset regardless of what the Dolphins do come April and I'm sure I'll flip-flop on what they should do every few days. But, the logical move that is Tua Tungavailoa's debut season with the Miami Dolphins had an anticlimactic conclusion. The former Alabama football star failed to lead the Dolphins to the playoffs as they finished second in the AFC East behind the Josh Allen-led Buffalo Bills. Coach Brian Flores Boys suffered a 56-26 defeat at the hands of the Bills in Week 17, which ended their NFL playoffs hopes. Despite a disappointing end to his rookie year, Tua Tungavailoa showed signs of promise over the course of the last two months. Tua ended the season with a 6-3 record as the Dolphins' starting quarterback. The youngster threw for 1,800-plus yards with 11 passing touchdowns against 5 interceptions. He will hold on to the starting quarterback berth in 2021 ahead of veteran Ryan Fitzpatrick. But what do the Dolphins need to do in order to support their young leader? NFL analyst Dan Orlovsky made an appearance on ESPN's Get Up earlier today. The former Detroit Lions quarterback reckons the Dolphins should bring in a first-round wide receiver in the 2021 NFL Draft event to offer Tua offensive support in his sophomore year. He said, they should be thinking really good offensive linemen, a really special wide receiver. There'll be two of them available in your top five picks, Tua is gonna be fine. He will be absolutely fine. Here's the thing. First of all, a poor offensive line. We've talked about that with the Dolphins and relatively poor skill players. And in a scheme that's poor, those three things with a young quarterback, you're going to struggle, okay, so they need to upgrade the offensive line still. They need to get better skilled players, they need to get better wide receiver weapons on the outside, top to bottom. And then they need a scheme that's going to fit his skill set more on a consistent basis. He needs to be in something that the Saints run or something similar to what the Saints ran with Drew Brees, Orlovsky said on the show. We all know that Dolphins fan fans are dreaming of a potential Tua Tungavailoa Devona Smith reunion in 2021. The two players played together for the Alabama Crimson Tide football team. Devonda Smith is great. Because, Alabama wide receiver set multiple records and was named offensive most valuable player of Monday night's 52-24 win over Ohio State in the college football playoff national championship. 
Smith, who was awarded the Heisman Trophy last Tuesday, exited the game early in the third quarter with a right-hand injury. He returned to the sideline in the fourth quarter in street clothes with his hand heavily bandaged. Afterward, Smith said he had a dislocated finger and noted that he will be all right. The senior needed only two quarters to make history, as he caught 12 passes, a CFP title game record. His 215 receiving yards were the second most in a CFP or BCS game, and his three receiving touchdowns tied a BCS CFP title game record set by Southern California's Steve Smith in 2005. Devonta Smith's march into the record books began on Monday's opening drive, as a 15-yard reception broke the SEC record for career receiving yards previously held by Jordan Matthews, who set the mark of 3,759 yards at Vanderbilt from 2010 to 2013. Smith finishes his SEC career with 3,965 receiving yards. Smith also set the SEC single-season receiving 1,856 yards and touchdown 23 records. He caught his 21st touchdown on a five-yard reception in the second quarter, breaking a tie with LSU's Jamar Chase, who set the mark last season. And Smith also broke Chase's single-season record for receiving yards in the second quarter, going past the previous mark of 1,780 yards. Heaven knows what he would have done if he played the whole game, Alabama coach Nick Saban said. Smith, who had to watch a portion of Smith, who had to watch a portion of the game from the locker room, credited his teammates for stepping up in his absence. It came down to the young guys just putting in the work, every day, every week, knowing if somebody went down, they were going to have to come in and do something big, he said. I believed in them from the jump. That's what we do, that is why you come to Bama. Monday night marked the fifth time in Smith's career he registered 200 or more receiving yards in a game. His career best for receiving yards in a game was 274 against Ole Miss on September 28, 2019. Smith, who first gained notoriety when he caught the winning pass in overtime of the 2018 CFP title game as a freshman, leaves Alabama as the school's all-time leader in receiving yards and touchdowns 46. Unbelievable, Smith said of the Alabama's season. We just finished writing our story, that was the whole thing of us coming back, just finishing the story that we wanted to write, and we did that. The Dolphins were all draft pick this year. But they are also keeping a close eye on Alabama stars W.R. Jalen Waddell, R.B. Najee Harris, and W.R. Rashad Bateman of Minnesota.